Namaste, Dharma Pranam, by the instruction and grace of our spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj. We are here reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Chapter 29, um, Canto 3, The Status Quo, Chapter 29, Explanation of Devotional Service by Lord Kapila, Texts 1 through 2. Divahutir Uvacha Lakshana Mahad Adinam Prakritte Purushasya Cha Svarupam Lakshate Misam Yena Tat Purm Hartikam Yata Sankyeshu Kati Tam Yan Mulam Tat Prachakshate Bhakti Yogasya Me Margam Bruhi Vistara Saprabhu. <clears throat> Devahuti inquired, My dear Lord, you have already very scientifically described the symptoms of the total material nature and the characteristics of the spirit according to the Sankhya system of philosophy. Now I shall request you to explain the path of devotional service which is the ultimate end of all philosophical systems. Purport. <clears throat> In this 29th chapter, the glories of devotional service are elaborately explained, and the influence of time on the conditioned soul is also described. The purpose of elaborately describing the influence of time is to detach the conditioned soul from his, great, uh, from his material activities which are considered to be simply a waste of time. In the previous chapter, material nature, the spirit and the Supreme Lord or super soul are analytically studied. And in this chapter, the principles of bhakti yoga or devotional service, the execution of activities and the external relationship between the living entities and the personality of Godhead are explained. Bhakti yoga, devotional service, is the basic principle of all systems of philosophy. All philosophy, which does not aim for devotional service to the Lord is considered merely mental speculation. But of course, bhakti yoga with no philosophical basis is more or less sentiment. There are two classes of men. Yeah, Srila Prabhupada said, but of course, bhakti yoga with no philosophical basis is more or less sentiment. There are two classes of men. Some consider themselves intellectually advanced and simply speculate and meditate. And others are sentimental and have no philosophical basis for their propositions. Neither of these can achieve the highest goal of life. Or if they do, it will take them many, many years. Vedic literature, therefore, suggests that there are three elements, namely the Supreme Lord, the living entity, and their eternal relationship, and that the goal of life is to follow the principles of bhakti, or devotional service, and ultimately attain to the planet of the Supreme Lord in full devotion and love as an eternal servitor of the Lord. Sankhya philosophy is the analytical study of all existence. One has to understand everything by examining its nature and characteristics. This is called acquirement of knowledge. But one should not simply acquire knowledge without reaching the goal of life, or the basic principle for acquiring knowledge, bhakti yoga. If we give up bhakti yoga and simply busy ourselves in the analytical study of the nature of things as they are, then the result will be practically nil. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita that such engagement is something like husking a patty. There is no use beating the husk if the grain has already been removed. By the scientific study of the material nature, the living entity and the super soul, one has to understand the basic principle of devotional service to the Lord. Text 3. Vairago yena purusho bhagavan sarvato bhavet 
Achaksva jiva lokasya vividha mama samskriti. Devahuti continued, My dear Lord, please also describe in detail, both for me and for people in general, the continual process of birth and death. For by hearing such uh, by hearing of such calamities, we may become detached from the activities of this material world. Purport. In this verse, the word samshruti is very important. Shreya shruti means the prosperous path of advancement towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And samshruti means the continued journey on the path of birth and death towards the darkest region of material existence. People who have no knowledge of this material world, God and their actual intimate relationship with him, are actually going to the darkest region of material existence in the name of progress in the material advancement of civilization. To enter the darkest region of material existence means to enter into a species of life other than the human species. Ignorant men do not know that after this life, they are completely under the grip of material nature and will be offered a life which may not be very congenial. How a living entity gets different kinds of bodies will be explained in the next chapter. This continual change of bodies and birth and death is called samsar. Devahuti requests her glorious son, Kapila Muni, to explain about this continued journey to impress upon the conditioned souls that they are undergoing a path of degradation by not understanding the path of bhakti yoga, devotional service. Text four. Kalesya svara rupasya paresham cha parasyate svarupam bhatta kurvanti yadeto kushalam jana. Please also describe eternal time, which is a representation of your form and by whose influence people in general, engage in the performance of pious activities. However ignorant one may be regarding the path of good fortune and the path down to the darkest region of ignorance, everyone is aware of the influence of eternal time, which devours all the effects of material activities. The body is born at a certain time, and immediately the influence of time acts upon it. From the date of the birth of the body, the influence of death is also acting. The advancement of age entails the influence of time on the body. If a man is 30 or 50 years old, then the influence of time has already devoured 30 or 50 years of the duration of his life. Everyone is conscious of the last stage of life, when he will meet the cruel hands of death. But some consider their age and circumstances, concern themselves with the influence of time, and thus engage in pious activities, so that in the future they will not be put into a low family or animal species. But generally, people are attached to sense enjoyment and so aspire for life on heavenly planets. Therefore, they engage themselves in charitable or other pious activities. But actually, as stated in Bhagavad Gita, one cannot get relief from the chain of birth and death even if he goes to the highest planet, Brahmaloka, because the influence of time is present everywhere within this material world. In the spiritual world, however, the time factor has no influence. X5. Lokasya mitya bimater akchusas cheram prashupatasya tamasya nashraye Trantasya karmas fanu vidhayadiya fam avirasi kila yoga bhaskara. My dear Lord, you are just like the sun, for you illuminate the darkness of the conditional life of the living entities. Because their eyes of knowledge are not open, they are sleeping eternally in that darkness without your shelter. And therefore, they are falsely engaged by the actions and reactions of their material activities, and they appear to be very fatigued. Purpur. It appears that Srimati Devahuti, the glorious mother of Lord Kipiladev, 
is very compassionate for the regrettable condition of people in general, who, not knowing the goal of life, are sleeping in the darkness of illusion. It is the general feeling of the Vaishnava or devotee of the Lord that he should awaken them. Similarly, Devahuti is requesting her glorious son to illuminate the lives of the conditioned souls so that they, uh, their most regrettable conditional life may be ended. The Lord is described herein as Yoga Bhaskara, the sum, the son of all systems of yoga. Devahuti has already requested her glorious son to describe Bhakti Yoga, and the Lord has described Bhakti Yoga as the ultimate yoga system. Bhakti Yoga is the sun-like illumination for delivering the conditioned souls, whose general condition is described here. They have no eyes to see their own interests. They do not know that the goal of life is not to increase material necessities of existence, because the body will not exist more than a few years. The living beings are eternal, and they have their eternal need. If one engages only in caring for the necessities of the body, not caring for the eternal necessities of life, then he is a part of a civilization whose advancement puts the living entities in the darkest region of ignorance. Sleeping in that darkest region, one does not get any refreshment, but rather gradually becomes fatigued. He invents many processes to adjust this fatigued condition, but he fails and thus remains confused. The only path for mitigating his fatigue and the struggle for existence is the path of devotional service or the path of Krishna consciousness. Text six. Maitreya uvacha etima torvacha slaksnam pratinandya mahamuni abhasya Abhabhase kuru shrestha, pritastam karun hardita. Sri Maitreya said, O best among the kurus, the sage Kapila, moved by great compassion and pleased by the words of his glorious mother, spoke as follows. Purport. Lord Kapila was very satisfied by the request of his glorious mother because she was thinking not only in terms of her personal salvation, but in terms of all fallen conditioned souls. The Lord is always compassionate towards the fallen souls of this material world, and therefore he comes himself or sends his confidential servants to deliver them. Since he is perpetually compassionate towards them, he comes, um, if some devotee of his also becomes compassionate towards them, he is very pleased with the devotees. In Bhagavad Gita, it is clearly stated that persons who are trying to elevate the condition of the fallen souls by preaching the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita, namely full surrender unto the personality of Godhead, these people are very dear to him. Thus, when the Lord saw that his beloved mother was very compassionate toward the fallen souls, he was pleased and he also became compassionate towards her. And thus ends our reading for today. We'll continue from text seven on Friday. Jai Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Shrila Prabhupada Shrila Guru Maharaj Shrila Guru Dev Shrila Acharya Dev Shrila Shanta Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai. Our glorious to the assembled devotees, our glorious to the worldwide devotees. Sama Bhakti Veda Vrinda Ki Jai. Jai Navarit Dham Ki Jai. Nishangapoli Dham Ki Jai. Mayapur Dham Ki Jai. Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai. Bade Subhadra Jagannath Ju Ki Jai. Gangamati Yamuna Mai Ki Jai. Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. Dear Guru Gupta Govardhan Dham Ki Jai. Shakund Radhakund Ki Jai. Tosa okay. Devi Bhakti Devi Vrinda Devi Ki Jai. Okay. Jai Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Okay. Jai Harinam Sankirtan Yagya Ki Jai. Scientific okay. Sankirtan Yagya Ki Jai. Okay. Princeton Bhakti Vedanta Institute Ki Jai. Sri Chaitanya okay. Saraswat Institute Ki Jai. Sri Chaitanya okay. Saraswat Mat Ki Jai. Okay. Gaur Premanandi Hari 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 Jai Srimati Uma Devi Dasi Ki Jai. Hare okay. Krishna. श्रीपाद कृष्ण केशव प्रभु जी की जय धन्यवाद प्रणाम करते हैं धन्यवाद श्री हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा